Welcome to the Stop, Drop, and It podcast. My name is Lisa and I am coming to you from Long Island, New York on a rather cool day. Yesterday it was in the 90s and miserable and today we are we are low 60s so once again I am still coming to you from the same location where I am only partially living still while we are still moving into our new place life has been crazy but I just finished up the semester at my school this past week which was crazy busy um, and now I have about six weeks of a very much more relaxed schedule. So hopefully lots of things are going to get done on the moving front, but also on the knitting front. So let's see, this is now episode 55. I think I have a pretty fun episode planned for you guys today. Um, what is this? This, you guys, is my sock drawer. I guess you could say it's a bin. This is my sock bin. This is where I keep all of my hand knit socks. and. I thought since I have been really, really busy these past few weeks and while I have been knitting, I, I don't feel like the updates on my projects are as significant as I would like for them to be. I still have no finished objects, but I've been knitting, I've been making progress. So because those project updates, which I will take you through, they are going to be on the briefer side than usual. Um, because I just I've been so busy I thought since we are in the warmer weather now and on the rare occasion that I have every single pair of my hand knit socks washed clean and put away that this would be a good time to share all of my hand knit socks with you guys and I thought we could also do a fun giveaway so if you guys are interested in a giveaway, stick around. I will share how to enter at the end of the podcast and let's get started. So really quick before we begin and get into the what am I wearing segment, I just wanted to share that you can find me on Instagram at Lisa Westervelt Flute Studio and all of the projects that I will share today are on my Ravelry, which is Lisa Jack 78. So you guys can check out my projects there. I will have everything that I talk about today linked in the description box below this video for your information. And in case you're not able to use Ravelry, I will also be placing the pattern names on the screen so that you guys can look those up for yourself. All right, so what am I wearing today? So today I am wearing my Tanya. It is a pattern by Caitlin Hunter. I wear this every chance that I get. This is um, one of her Nidalee collection, I think, which is a collection of summer tea patterns that she does designs on places that she would like to visit in Italy. So the Tanya has this really gorgeous lace pattern. So you actually cast on hundreds and hundreds of stitches at the bottom to begin. And you start with this really intricate and fun, very simple lace pattern. I recommend placing stitch markers in between each pattern repeat so that you can quickly check to make sure you are still on pattern. But once you get through this point, it is a breeze to knit. You are just stock a net in the round until you have to do the like shoulder shaping and stuff at the front and so you split at the top do some sleeves and you've got a really cute tag no top so this the yarn that i knit this in is lamb strings yarn um, i think it's her sadie singles and the colorway is called petunia i just i love this one you guys have seen it on the podcast so many times because i truly wear it every chance that i get um it's great for the weather where it's not super hot like i couldn't have survived in this yesterday when it was in the 90s but we're in the 60s 60s and 70s i'm pretty i'm pretty good with this one i can i can wear my hand knits when we get into the 80s it gets a little bit difficult for me i don't like being hot so yeah so if you guys have not knit the tanya um i really think that you should it's just i love it i wear it all the time it looks great in so many different yarns and I think that it is a flattering pattern for everybody. 
So I definitely recommend this one. Okay, so let's get into my current whips. So my very first whip that I have to share with you guys today is one that I have been trucking along on pretty well. It is the Souffle Tea by um, Penrose Knits. And as you guys can see, I have been making quite a bit of progress on it as I drop it. <laughs> so um, yeah, let me hold it up. I'll stand up so you can see how much progress I have made. So I have been very actively knitting on this one and it came to a screeching halt the other day because I am now up to the hem, which requires another, a smaller needle size. And all my needles have been moved to my new apartment. So I need to make a trip over there in order for me to pick up needles to finish my souffle. So in the meantime though, um, let's see, the yarn that I'm using, I think this is the same exact colorway and everything that Lori used in her sample. It's colorway 70701 and it is Lang Yarns Lace Mohair Super Kid Silk. So that is what I am using and I'm very excited about this one. So I feel like this has made quite significant progress since the last time I showed it to you guys a couple weeks ago. So the, the top portion, the yoke portion here is knit just with a single strand of the mohair and there will be an I-cord edging on the neckline that will kind of cinch it together a little bit more. And then from this point here, this pearl bump row is actually going to be a ruffle, a sweet little ruffle. It's so cute. I will insert a picture. And from that point on, you're holding two strands together. So it's sheer on the top here and then the whole rest of it is two strands together. And then the back has this little, it's going to be like a little keyhole button closure in the back. So that is also super sweet. So I am actually, I feel like, I feel like the finish line is really near. I just need to head over to the apartment and I need to pick up a few things, not just for this project, but for some other things as well. So I just, I need to go, I need to go shopping in my own little yarn shop because I do not need to buy anything else. I have everything that I need. It's just not with me anymore here. It's, it's in boxes, but luckily my boxes are pretty clearly labeled. So I know exactly where my knitting needle box is. There is a wasp sitting there right next to my coffee. So let's continue. <laughs> Sorry. So yeah, um, I'm gonna head over maybe later tonight, but definitely I'll be over there tomorrow for a little bit. So I just need to kind of make a list of the things that I need to collect for my projects so that I can continue. But yeah, super pleased with the progress on this. I think once I get the needles, the rest of the materials that I need, um, I should be able to finish this one pretty quickly. So yay, excited about that. So when I got stuck on this one because I didn't have the right tools at that point, I started picking up my effervescent tea. So my effervescent tea is the cover issue of the Spring Pom Pom Magazine. And it is, it's super sweet. As you can see, I have a thing for lace and ruffles. Um, they're just, it's so sweet. It's so sweet. I love the, the extra little details like that. But right now, let me get my project out. Um, the way that this one starts, like unlike the one that I'm wearing right now, which starts with the really interesting lace bit, that bit is at the top. So we have started with the very mindless stockinette in the round. And so I have actually been working on this quite a bit the last few days, but I feel like, um, uh oh, we're stuck. It's all tangled up. Here we go. 
but I feel like even though I know I've made a lot of progress, I, I don't think it's gonna look like that much difference. <laughs> so first I'll show you the yarn that I'm using. So this is it caked up. It is called Cosmic Tie Dye and it is by The Wandering Flock, which is, I feel like we're maybe blowing out, but there you go. So it's really like a really bright, like pastel, really soft but bright at the same time. Um, it's a singles yarn and let's see, this is what it looks like in the skein. So it's really fun. And then for the lace part, it is in mohair. So I've also got coordinating mohair, but we're not up to that yet. So right now I have a few inches and it's curling because you know stuck in it so I'm gonna see if I can hold it up by the cable so that you guys can see I have that much progress made which I know it's not a lot but it is a bunch more than I had the last time I showed it to you guys which was two podcasts ago I mean it's been it's been several weeks because there were a few weeks where I just didn't even work on this at all I think I started this on April 1st and work has been super busy so it just has been kind of something that I pick up sometimes but I love the way that the colors are coming out so what I am doing the reason I have two of these right now is I am alternating skeins because it is a hand dyed yarn and I didn't want it to pull funny especially because like this yellow is super bright I wanted it to just be really blended in there to be an overall color and not have like weird splotches of, of color in certain places. And I also am using my, um, my Katrinkles Iridescent Kitty Cat uh, stitch marker. I thought that that paired really well with this one. And yeah, I, this has been really great the past few nights. I've just, I've, I've had this to work on while I've been like stuck without the right needles for my other souffle project. So, so this has gotten a, a couple more inches on it. I, I think it was about this long before. So I think, I think now we've got maybe an extra two or three inches from what I had had the last time I showed it to you guys. You guys, those are the only two, those are the only two projects. Um, I think I did work on my socks a little bit, so hold on a second. So I did spend a little bit more time working on my current socks whip. So I wasn't really gonna show these to you guys today because I don't feel like I've made that much progress on them. But because I'm going to be showing you every single pair of hand knit socks in a little bit here, I, I thought that I should show these to you guys. So um, I have almost another pair done. So these are the Magic Ribbed Socks, the Magic Real Hibbed Socks by Judy Jewel of the Autumn Acorn Podcast. And basically it is a vanilla sock. And instead of doing heel shaping, you just have like this whole section on the bottom, on the back at the heel point where it is red. See, I wish, I don't have sock blockers. So, you know, I just don't think that they're the most necessary thing. I guess they would be good for this episode where I'm gonna be showing all my socks, but you know, it's, it's okay. So basically, if this were my heel, the ribbed section kind of sits over the heel. And so, these I think would be great for kids with growing feet. So I think I am going to try to knit a pair of these for my son um, because he's pretty much already grown out of almost all of his hand knit socks. And so with the second sock, I am just past the heel point and I am now on the foot. So that one doesn't have too much further to go. I've just honestly been more interested in knitting on my sweater projects recently. But this one I've been taking to me, um, 
taking with me when I go to Owen's theater and I've been working on it again. My husband's been taking him mostly because it's conflicted with my work schedule, but now that I'm off from work for the next like month and a half, then I'm gonna be taking Owen to theater again. And so this is the project that I'm gonna be taking with me to work on while he is in rehearsal. So the yarn that I'm using is Knitterly Things and it's called Sometimes in April. And these are super bright pastels, like way brighter than the effervescent pastels that I'm working on. So yeah, so that is my sock project. And before we get into my sock drawer, I just have a very quick update on my spinning. So let's head into spinning. I am so close to being finished spinning and plying my sweater weather yarn. So this is fiber that I got from Frabjus Fibers, which as part of my brand ambassadorship with Wonderland Yarns, you guys can save 15% off your order of most things um, on the Wonderland Yarns website. So you can use the code YARNVIP. I will put it on the screen here and in the description box below. You guys can save 15% off of your order. Basically yarn, fiber, not for like special limited edition clubs. And there are some restrictions, but basically if it's like straight up yarn and fiber, you guys can save 15% on your next project. So the, blah, 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 blah. The fiber that I have been spinning is an organic Polworth silk top blend and it was a limited edition colorway from October called Sweater can't talk called Sweater Weather. Why is that so hard to say sometimes? Sweater Weather. I I feel like I've tripped over that combination of words in my podcasts previously many times. So I, over the weekend, got another little little skein plied together. So I'll show you my latest one. Um, this is like approximately 130 yards, I think. And so it's so pretty. So mostly it is barber pole type striped yarn and it's a two ply and I don't know, I have not uh, figured out what weight yarn it is yet. I think it's probably gonna be like a sport, a sport weight. It kind of feels sport weight-ish. So yeah, something like that. And so I have now this one and this one and this one. So I think that this was also about 130 yards. So about 260 yards plus whatever this is so it's gonna be like a pretty decent amount of yardage I feel like it is now misting a little bit out here it's not supposed to rain today but eh, it'll be fine um, so that is all done and then the very last I started plying the very last bit of it um, okay that just fell off of that that's okay so this is all that I have left of my singles to ply together and then it's gonna be done. So once I get this plied together, I am going to then um, wet finish the yarn because I haven't done that yet. I've just I've plied it together, but it has not been set. So I am seeing the end, the light at the end of the tunnel with this yarn which is great because it's it's such a pretty colorway and I would love to knit this up into something this autumn so I'm excited that I'm gonna have this ready to use for the fall so all right let's talk socks all right guys it is time for the super fun part of the episode I think I have been wanting to make this segment a video on this for since last year, last summer, I thought of this idea and I it just never got around to making this video. So I thought since the rest of my podcast today was gonna be so brief that this would be a really good time to have a look at all my hand-knit socks. It's not as many as I thought. I 
think I counted 29. So this is not gonna go on like all day or anything. So don't worry about that. But, all right, I separated into categories. So I'm gonna put that down there. I, I made a list and it's like, not that long, but it's true. I made a list because I was never gonna remember all of the different patterns because these days I knit a lot of vanilla socks and I tend to use the same pattern, but I do have a lot of like one-off random sock patterns that I have knit and I should do more of those because they're pretty interesting. Um, okay, so let's just get started. I'm so excited <laughs> to show you all my socks. So as I said, I do not have a sock blocker. Sorry about that. I just, I'd rather buy yarn. Not that I need more sock yarn, but yeah. Um, I'd just rather buy yarn and I'd, I'm not gonna actually block the socks because I just wear them and I don't know. I think they're cool. I should get a pair of sock blockers so that if I want to do a segment like this, I have a nicer way of showing them to you, but you guys will forgive me, right? Because I think it's still going to be pretty fun. Um, when possible, I will try to insert a picture of them on my feet. I don't, I don't know up front right now, like how many of pictures I'm going to find, but I know that some of these I definitely have pictures of and when I do have a picture I'll share them so that you can have like a more accurate view of the actual sock. All right so we're gonna start with the one pair of shorty socks that I have and I really should knit more. These are so comfortable. I wear shorty socks only in the summer. The rest of the year I don't <clears throat> I don't wear them but um, I'm, I'm always wearing shorty socks in the summer. I don't like to have bare feet and I don't like to wear shoes in the house. It's just a thing. I just, I don't like, I don't know, the rest of my family wears shoes in the house. I just, I just don't like it. So I wear socks in the house. I cannot go around in bare feet because let's just say that the floor is not always as clean as I would like it to be. But in my new place, I'm gonna have more control over that. So anyway. All right, the first pair of socks that I'm gonna share with you, I should knit more of these. It's so cute. These were a test knit that I did for Hohi Locatelli. These are her Flores socks. And I knit these for her 2019. So these are so cute. I definitely have a picture of these, but uh, they're adorable. I can, I'll put a picture in, but the lace pattern, it's like a little scalloped lace pattern. It's super sweet. So yeah, these are really cute, um, just lightweight, lightweight socks. Um, oh, he look at how she lives down, I think in Argentina, right? So it's often really hot where she is. So I can imagine like that she would have a lot of shorty socks in her collection. Don't really know, but. This is the only uh, Hohi Locatelli pair of socks that I have ever knit and the pattern was amazing. I mean, all of Hohi Locatelli's patterns are super clear and super well written. And let's see, the yarn that I used for these, um, Oink Pigments, Targi Sock, and the colorway is Pigs, Doom, and Tacos. So I'm not really sure how you get pigs doom and tacos out of these beautiful aqua and gray colors but it's a fun name so yeah i super super well written pattern the yarn is great so yeah the combination is perfect i have another half skein of this yarn left that has not yet made it into a project so i think i'll probably knit um another pair of shorty socks with those, but I would like to try a different pattern. So that's the first pair of socks. All right, I think I'm gonna pile them on the table as we talk about them because it's pollen season and I did not bring another bin to put everything in and I don't wanna spread my socks all over the deck that is covered in layers of pollen. All right, next up, oh my goodness, you guys, this next one. 
not the first pair of socks that I ever knit because the first pair of socks that I ever, ever knit was a gift for my mom. She doesn't really wear them. I think she wears them as bed socks, but they don't really fit her very well. But the Jaywalkers, do you guys remember when the Jaywalker sock pattern was super popular? So the Jaywalkers is a pattern by Grumperina and well, you can see that I had some problems. <laughs> so also, okay, I don't remember the name of the colorway, but this was the very, very first pair of Knitterly Things yarn that I ever purchased. I think I ordered like four different colorways, but this was the first one I ever knit up. So you can see that they're different sizes. Um, let's just say that this one <laughs> I knit in 2006, okay? And so I think I used like size zero needles. I'm pretty sure that I used the same needles for these because uh, my yarn was packed away for six years, not touched. So I, I did this one in 2006 and I knit this one in 2012. So my knitting over those six years changed quite a bit. I still wear these. They both do get on my feet. This one's kind of tight. As you can see, like the, um, it, it's, it's kind of a very, very dense. This fabric is, is really dense. And this fabric is nice and, and loosey goosey and this this one fits really well <laughs> and this one I have to fight a little bit to get this one on my foot but I still wear them I do wear them a lot they they look really different when you hold them up next to each other because they are <laughs> um, but I made them and I I did eventually finish them and I'm really proud of myself and it's actually really kind of fun to like have a very obvious example of my knitting progression <laughs> in this one pair of socks here. So yeah, Jaywalker socks by Grumperina. And yeah, six years, it took me six years to, <laughs> to finish this one pair of socks. So, all right, that's that one. You guys are gonna see some major progress along the course because especially all right so the the socks that I'm showing you now to start out are all of the one-off patterns that I did um, so like this next one here <laughs> these, these are so long um, I, I can't I don't know the pattern the pattern I found I mean it was around these, I call these my honeymoon socks. So I bought the yarn and, and I knit these in 2013 because we got married in 2013. So that much I know. Um, so I want to say, so I know that it was from an Interweave Knits magazine, probably from 2013, right, is where this sock pattern is. I did not put it um, in my Ravelry, like the name of the pattern or anything, so I just don't know. Um, so the yarn is super fun. I think the yarn colorway is, okay, it is called Storm Chaser and it's Sweet Georgia Yarns Tough Love Sock. So this was a honeymoon purchase. So on my honeymoon, we went to Rhode Island. We went to Newport, Rhode Island for our honeymoon um, and we went to a few different yarn shops while we're there because my husband is awesome and he, he knows that I, I need to visit yarn shops if we're on vacation. So I call these my honeymoon socks because this was knit with yarn purchased on my honeymoon. And yeah, and I have no idea what the pattern is, but you can, it, these, these socks are like, <laughs> they're so long, they go like, I don't know. They go so high. There is this really fun, like traveling cable pattern. So it's on the opposite side of each foot. So you can see the heel is right here, right? 
Um, so this would be like the top of the leg and then this would go so on the front and on the side. So the, the pattern starts on the side of the foot and then it kind of spreads out into three separate little cables. So those were some early socks that I made. I felt like these socks took forever and you know you can see why because they're super long. Um, but they, they fit a little bit big on me. I have never done a gauge swatch for a pair of socks. I, I just I can't like I can't be bothered gauging for socks. But this was also before I understood the importance of a gauge swatch. But still, I'm not going to gauge swatch for socks. They just However they come out, I'll either wear them or they'll be so off that I'll gift them to somebody, right? So it's just socks. Um, so yeah, Storm Chaser, Sweet Georgia, Tough Love socks, Honeymoon socks. All right. Next up, we have another pair of Sweet Georgia socks, Tough Love socks. These, I never did, you know, I don't block my socks because I don't have sock blockers. So again, like this has a lace pattern. I should take my hairband, put it over there. This has a, a lace pattern that looks like that. And these are called the Cherry Lane Socks. It's a pattern by Felicia Lowe, who is the owner of Sweet Georgia. And yeah, so it's got like this all over lace pattern. So there's like a big lacy panel on the front and then smaller ones on the sides of the feet. And it goes around the entire circumference of the sock. And so that's what these look like. These are really loose on me. So I think when I was, when I was knitting socks, I think at this point I was using like a size two needle and most of the time now I'm knitting on a size one needle or even a size zero depending on what I grab. Um, I don't really knit my socks on size two anymore. I think they were just coming out too big. So eventually I just went to a smaller needle size and that solved a lot of my problem. So the colorway, do I have the colorway in this one? No, I don't know what the colorway was, but um, it's really pretty. It's just like different, like a, a tonal, a tonal pink color. And yeah, that's what it is. All right. So, all right, next up. Okay. So these are another fun sock pattern. These were my only pair of Cookie A socks. I was listening a lot to the Knit More Girls podcast and years ago, um, I, cause I was going through like the older episodes first because I like to do things in order. And years ago they would talk all the time about Cookie A sock patterns. Um, and being really fun and challenging. So I went and I purchased a book off Amazon of sock patterns by Cookie A. I have no idea what the A stands for, but <laughs> um, that's just, she's just known as Cookie A. Um, so this was, I think it was the first pattern in the book and it is called Glynis. Glynis Sock by Cookie A. And again, I, I didn't block these, so it's like a all over lace pattern. It looks like that. And these are also a little bit, a little bit big. The yarn that I used, this is, the colorway is Rose Quartz and it's uh, Blue Moon Fiber Art Socks That Rock. And so this is what the sock looks like. It's really pretty. Again, they're like really long. <laughs> I used to knit my socks really long. Um, so these fit kind of slouchy on me and probably for like a lace sock, 
you'd want them a little bit more fitted so that the lace pattern is really highlighted but they're still they're super cozy they're great like I wear them with boots when I need like a little bit of a thicker a thicker sock and when it's a little bit colder out um, even though these have a lace pattern to them they keep my feet really warm they, they just kind of slouchy <laughs> slouchier than they should be for a pair of lace socks but it's a really pretty pattern if I knit them again um, I would probably not knit them again because I would want to try another one of her patterns from the book that I have um, I can't show you the book because everything is in boxes in my new place right now but um, yeah eventually eventually I'll show you guys my, my sock knitting books that might be a fun video to do too so yeah um, it, it, it took a while but they were successful. I just wish that I had knit them on like a size or two smaller needle. But next time I will, I'll know to do that. All right, so then in um, what year? So I knit those in 2018. Um, so in 2018, I decided to do towards a sock. And I only got through two rounds, but I got two really, really loud bird. I got two really awesome pairs of socks out of it. So, toward a sock, it's like, happens, it coincides with tour de France, I think, and tour de fleece, and there was a tour de sock. So there were like different rounds of patterns for socks, and I only did it the one time, so I don't really, know that much i got through the first two rounds and i just i got so far behind that i just never finished knitting the socks but the very first pair of socks these are some of my favorites and um it's a combination a really fun pattern and i love the yarn that i used so the plan a socks by adrian fong and so this was for like round one of tour de fleece and so the yarn I used was Lambstrings yarn. So Lambstrings is also what I'm wearing right now. And this was her Tra La La sock in the colorway 90s kid. So I was in the 90s. I was in middle school and high school in the 90s. So like seventh, eighth grade through when I went off through my undergrad years at college is when I was how old I was in the 90s so I wasn't really like a kid in the 90s I was like a, a teenager in the 90s but this um, this colorway really spoke to me I love it it's like it's like a basic gray sock but it's got these really fun bright jewel toned neon speckles it's super fun so the pattern I wish I'd do this over here so it's it's like a triangle lace pattern and yeah I wear these all the time I actually often pair these socks with my Tecumseh sweater because the colorway goes really well with that particular sweater um, yeah so these actually fit really well I did not swatch but I used like I might have actually used a size one needle for this pair because it fits a lot better either a one or a zero like whatever was recommended in the pattern but these oh, just I want to show you the bottom so that you can really see the speckles on these so I mean the bottom is a little it's a little worn right now but that's the bottom so I don't remember it had like actually you can see there's like a really interesting heel construction there it's, yeah I don't really remember okay that's a bee. Please go away. Please go away. I'm not gonna bother it. Okay. I almost just got attacked by a bee. It's dangerous recording outside. Super dangerous. Okay. And then the next pair of socks is around two from Torda Sock. And uh, these fit so well. I think these were the first like cable socks 
that I did and that fit like super great. Um, so these are called, oh gosh, all right, I'm gonna put this on the screen. Forgive my pronunciation. It's Odention Socks by Suzanne Sogren. Maybe she's Norwegian. I don't know. I don't know. I, I, yeah. But you can see too, like this is a normal sock length and the last pair too, like normal sock length. So I'm like, I finally have now started getting away from knitting my socks like that long. <laughs> I don't know why, I just, I just never stopped before. So I'm gonna open it up like this so that you guys can see the little cable pattern here. These fit so well. So that's the pattern. Um, Odention socks and the colorway is Hush and it is also Sweet Georgia Yarns Tough Love Sock. So this might have also been a pair of socks that I picked up uh, the yarn for on my honeymoon, I think. So yeah, these are like, my, might be my very best, my very best fitting pair of socks might be these right here. Okay, and then I have two more pairs of socks that are completely one-off patterns that I have knit. Um, all right, now I have to turn the page. So I've shown you seven so far. Okay, these, next up is, also I knit these in 2018. These are the Zigzagular Socks by Susie White. And this yarn you have seen before in other projects and socks for Owen, but this was Knitterly Things yarn in the colorway Painterly. And they're almost vanilla socks, but there is like a fun zigzagular pattern on the sides, just on one side. So it's like the inside part of the leg is like a plain vanilla sock. And then these, now these, I should probably fix these. I wear these all the time. You can see they're kind of worn out a bit, but they're not quite long enough for my feet. I don't, I don't know why. It probably could have used like another inch. So, I mean, I, I could take out the toes and finish them off. Or I could just knit myself another pair of socks because I mean, at this point, I have worn these so much that it doesn't much matter. So they don't fit great. And I don't know if it's the pattern or just that I knit them a little bit too short, but that's what the little pattern looks like. So it's like on the side of the top of the foot and then it goes up like that. So, but I love the yarn. You can see like the foot looks a little, a little short. I needed like another inch probably for them to fit me a lot better. So yeah, zigzagular socks, knitterly things, yarn. Um, yeah, I think probably I could have gone down to a size zero. I think what I've discovered is that when I am knitting a plain vanilla sock with like no kind of ribbing or patterning or anything, I need to use a size zero needles because just the way that the fabric is very plain and doesn't have any stretch or give or anything. Um, if I don't use a size zero needle and use a bigger needle, they just don't hug my feet the right way and they just become pretty slouchy. But yeah, this is the, I don't know how well you can see it, but there's sparkle to this yarn because this is on Julia's Glitterful Base. And I call these my Rainbow Bright socks because when I was knitting them, they reminded me of Rainbow Bright because I am an 80s kid, not an 90s kid. All right, so that brings me to my last pair of one-off socks. And um, you guys have seen these recently. These actually fit me really well as, as well. These are the Be Mine socks by Melissa Morgan Oaks. 
and this I knit this her pattern was from the um, two at a time socks book and I knit this from a sock blank from Jesse over at yarn over New York and it is a little it's a heart cable and this sock blank was pink with rainbow hearts all over it so I know that you know you can't see the cable as well as if I had knit this out of a tonal or a solid color yarn but I still love them and this yarn I had from leftovers and I knit Owen a pair of socks out of this yarn too and I still had leftovers so I did the heels and toes with the yarn the painterly things yarn from these socks so I have now used every bit of that painterly things yarn and yeah uh, these it was it was a labor of love um, doing them two at a time you can see my my heels are they're so cute and my toes are opposite too I love them um, yeah it's a great pattern the pattern fits really well um, I think I used a size zero needle which is why it fits really well and it just these were my first pair of the first and only so far pair of socks that I knit both at the same time which is why it was a real labor of love because I had to really focus and it took a while like until I had a good portion of the sock where things weren't just getting all tangled and mixed up so I need to give knitting socks two at a time another go before I can really form an opinion over whether it's a technique that I enjoy or not I think maybe the next time I need to knit socks for my husband I might do them two at a time because I definitely with his socks because he has like size 12 feet I definitely suffer with second sock syndrome when I knit socks for my husband so this you know I don't for myself have second sock syndrome because my feet are teeny tiny size five and a half and so they go pretty quickly but for his socks they take forever so it might be nice to to have the process overall take a longer time but then to just be done so I might try it again with socks for him in the future so that is like the first third of my socks pretty much um, next up I am going to show you socks that I have knit the patterns of multiple times um, actually first up before we even get that far so I have four pairs of socks here that are just plain old vanilla socks I did not use a pattern for any of these um it's just I cast on like the number of stitches I needed to for me which is 56 and I I did not follow a pattern all of these that I'm going to show you I'll tell you the yarn that I used but basically that it's a slip stitch heel gusset like standard vanilla sock pattern so it's it's not anybody's pattern it's just like the the regular sock formula um and so I'd basically just do like two by two ribbing for like an inch and a half or two inches and then just plain stock in it in the round, a slip stitch gusset, uh, heel flap and gusset decreases and that's it. So this yarn is Knitterly Things and it was um, a couple years ago she did <coughs> as part of her rainbow sock yarn club she had like every month she was focusing on a different color and so I think that this was maybe like January one of the January colors I don't remember I don't know what the color was called but um, basically to me it kind of looks like candy canes right so I wear these a lot at Christmas time and also around Valentine's Day because I think it, it fits really well into both seasons for that. Um, so it was a self-striping yarn and speckled like different larger sections of like a darker and a lighter speckly goodness and then it had a contrasting like a coordinating 
speckled mini that I used for the toes and the heels. So it was the first pair of vanilla socks. And then this was uh, one of her Halloween colorways. So this didn't actually come in one of her sock clubs. Every once in a while, I actually order yarn from her too, which I really have no business doing because I have like, okay. <laughs> so I have so much knitterly thing sock yarn and I really thought that I knit more socks out of it. But when I was just looking at all of the socks that I've knit, it was surprisingly very few socks that I've actually knit up with her yarn. So basically I am hoarding Knitterly Things yarn and I, I, need, to, I need to knit it up. So um, I made, these are my Halloween socks. I, I don't remember like what the name of the colorway was, but it was, you know, Halloween colors, specific like seasonal colors so again just heel flap nothing nothing fancy I didn't use a coordinating mini I never try to line them up but these actually came out pretty similar because I started at a similar similar point so yeah it's it's technically they're off just by like a half of a stripe if you really hold them up I don't mind I don't try to make my socks the same so I knit oh and a pair of these too which is really great the um, the amount of yarn that comes in one skein I am able to get a pair of socks for myself and then I also have enough to knit Owen a pair of socks as well so usually if it is a color that he is interested in when I'm done knitting myself socks I will go ahead and just cast on a pair of socks for him Okay, so next up, these are some of my favorite socks, and I did, I knit these for Owen too. Um, these are not knitterly things. This is Desert Vista Dye Works, and this is, um, she released this colorway a few years ago, like at the beginning of the pandemic. I think it's called Nurses Are Superheroes, and definitely it was like around the start of the pandemic that she came out with this colorway, and as soon as I saw it, I ordered it. Um, because Owen's favorite colors are blue and orange and so I just thought you know to make socks for him that would be great so I made a pair of socks for me first and then for him and I really really like this um, it's the only colorway of hers it's the only yarn of hers that I have ever purchased but I really like it a lot and if I didn't have so much sock yarn already I would definitely be ordering more from her so maybe at some point I will order more, but I love these. Um, and then the last pair of straight up vanilla socks that I have is this fun pair of socks. This is Dragonfly Yarns and the colorway is Horton Hears a Who. And so I just, they're so fun. I love, I just love these. Um, I actually, I wear these quite a bit. I wear all of my socks quite a bit. I wear them all. There is not a single pair of socks I have knit that have not been worn multiple times. So yeah, I knit Owen the same socks and he likes them a lot. I, he might have outgrown his. His might have gotten passed on to his little cousin by now, but we did have matching socks. So Horton, here's a who. This was um, a colorway from the previous owners of Dragonfly. Fiberworks. I had picked the yarn up at the very first Maryland Sheep and Wool Festival that I went to in 2018. So since then they have new owners now, so I don't know if this is a colorway that you can still get. Not sure. Okay. So Okay. Next up I have three pairs yeah, I have three pairs of socks that they're basically um, a plain vanilla sock, but I used a short row heel. And so I'll share these first because this is the very first pair that I did with a short row heel. And this yarn is a cotton sock yarn. I had to have this when I saw it. It's the Schockenmeyer and... I, 
I don't know if it's Regia, but they had like a Tutti Frutti line where they had like different fruit based sock yarns and it was cotton. So these are the only pair of cotton socks that I have. So um, I don't wear these a lot. I don't wear them at all in the winter actually um, because of them being cotton, they don't keep my feet warm. But these are really great for when I'm still wanting to wear socks and um, it's too warm to wear my wool socks. And then I have my cotton socks and I do actually want to knit a few more pairs of cotton socks so that for the in-between weather, I can still have fun hand knit socks that I can wear without being too hot. Um, but these do not keep my feet warm at all. So I do not wear these in the winter. But all I did was I followed the sock pattern on the ball band for these. So it gave me the directions to do the, the short row heel. And so, I mean, these are old. <laughs> I knit these probably also in 2018. Um, yeah, I don't even, I don't even have date on these. But so, I mean, they're worn. I've never knit, um, I've never worn through my socks where I've needed to darn a hole or anything. But, you know, they just, they kind of felt together at the bottom. But, so those were the first pair that I did. So this is super fun. You can still buy this yarn. Um, I should probably go and order a couple more colorways because I think it's, you know, it's just, they're really sweet. They had other kinds of fruits like orange, citrus, and, and other things. But I really liked the watermelon. So that was that pair. And then the next two, these are both Knitterly Things yarn. And I did, you know, a short row heel for both, for both of these. I, these are so fun. This yarn was called Unicorn Magic. I remember this came in the mail and I was like, that is so bright. But I wear these so much, oh my goodness. So it's like a really fun pastel stripe in a rainbow order, pink, yellow, green, teal, and purple, and then a larger speckly section, which she does quite a bit. I love these. So, and then the heels came out so cute with the short rows. So I've got my Unicorn Magic version. And then I also have, I forget the actual name, something about a pumpkin patch. Um, yeah, I knit, you guys have seen this on the podcast a lot because these, these were socks that I knit in the time that I was podcasting. And I knit some for Owen as well. And yeah, so these are just like a regular short row heel. And I love, I just love the colors of this one. So I wear these quite a bit as well. All right. So again, so those have like no specific pattern. I just, I followed the button, the button, yeah, the ball band for the first pair. And then I just looked up like a short row heel for those two pairs of socks. Um, now the next three pairs is the vanilla is the new black sock pattern. And so um, the very first time I knit that pattern, again, I had heard about this sock pattern on the Knit More Girls podcast. And it's like, what is this vanilla is the new black pattern? I need to give it a try. So basically it's a vanilla sock and you can see the heel has ribbing. Um, it is actually a chart that you follow for the heel. So I'll show you the, the back side of it there. It's like a triangle ribbing. I really enjoy this pattern. I've knit it three times now. Um, I might need to go down a needle size the, because the smallest size they have is for 60 stitches and I usually cast on 56 because I have really small feet um, and really narrow feet. So I might just try going down another needle size next time I knit this pattern and I think that that might help them fit just a little bit better. But it's a really, really, like it's a mindless pattern until you get to the heel and there's no heel turn or anything. All you do is you follow a chart for the heel 
and then you're just when the chart is done you are there's no decreases or anything you're just knitting in the rounds again so this one is Oink Pigments and the colorway was Roy G Pig so that was a really fun colorway and then I do not remember the brand of yarn I had picked up this yarn at uh, Nitty City back in like 2012 so it was sitting in my stash for a long time I, I don't remember the brand of it but um, I also made coordinating socks for my son out of the leftovers from this yarn so basically it's like a red and a blue yarn so I knit those and this I do remember this was knitterly things in the naughty and nice colorway and so this was something that it was one of her club yarns I think from a couple years ago it was like a like one of her December yarns so it is naughty and nice okay sorry I got interrupted for just a second there but all right we are trucking along here I actually only have I have a bunch more socks to show you but only two more patterns to talk about so it's gonna go pretty quickly um, so I have knit four pairs of socks using the basic ribbed socks pattern by Kate Atherley and the very first one was also a yarn that I picked up at Nitty City and I think I cast these on right away. This is Sweet Georgia Yarns and the color is Tapestry and I wear these all the time especially in the autumn nice autumnal colors and um, basically it is a three by one rib that continues down the entire leg of the sock and then on the top part of the foot and then the bottom part of the foot is just plain stockinette so that was the very first pair that I knit with that pattern and these fit me really great I wear these all the time um, and then I had a little bit of a, a washing mishap with this next pair but this was one of those um, Schockenmeyer Zauber ball colorways and it's like watermelon colorways um, I actually wear these at Christmas time a lot um, they don't match at all I love them you can see they like I don't know I when I, I just wash all my socks together and I must have put them in a, with a pair that just hadn't been washed before and the white part picked up the color I was a little bit bummed it's really um this sock is perfectly fine so it's really it's just this sock and I do have enough yarn leftovers so at some point I might just knit another one but I still wear them it's really mostly I don't I don't know I don't like show people my feet when I'm out so it's either in my shoe or it's under my jeans right so so I just I still wear them I like them they fit really well so um, again this was just um, that same that same basic ripped socks pattern and that's how this Zauber ball knit up now two more this is kind of fun I used all different yarn for these socks I love these socks okay so this one is three Irish girls yarn and it is rocket man rocket man maybe something like that um yeah i love it it's super fun it's like they have like different variations on this colorway i think they have one with like a white background and one with a black background but this one i have is a gray background and i had the the heels and toes i think 
I had a mini, I think it was Knitterly Things probably, because I have a lot of Knitterly Things minis. So I just, like I found a mini that went really well. And I love these, they're so fun. Um, Owen has a coordinating pair of socks. I don't know if he has already outgrown his or not because I did knit these right before the pandemic started. So his feet probably have outgrown them. His cousin probably has these right now. Um, but these super fun, I love these. And then the last pair I have is, I don't remember if it was called Sweethearts or something. This was Knitterly Things again. Oh, there's hair. Hold on, there we go. So this is Knitterly Things and I wear these a lot around Valentine's Day, but I actually have a lot of pink and purple in my wardrobe. So these actually get worn quite a bit, not just at Valentine's Day. But again, it's the same three by one pattern. This pattern fits me really well and it's, it's super easy to memorize. So this is a pattern that I will continue to knit again and again. Okay, we have one more pattern category to share with you. And all of these socks were knit with the My Vanilla my heart, what is it called? <laughs> oh my goodness, I always get it mixed up. My Knitted Heart Vanilla Socks by Elizabeth Suarez. Okay, so I think her like brand is My Knitted Heart and this is her version of Vanilla Socks. So My Knitted Heart Vanilla Socks. And this is probably my favorite pattern. You can see by the amount of socks I have here that I love it because it fits me so super well. Okay, so let's see, let's find the oldest socks, I think, were, I love these. This pair of socks, um, Quarry Fibers, Q-U-A-R-E, Quarry, Quarry, I don't know, but the colorway is Peacock. This was also yarn I picked up on my honeymoon. Hi, Melody. We got a cat. Okay, so I love these. I wear these all the time. Just the colorway is super fun. I love how the stripes are different widths and I just love these. So this pattern, let me show you. Um, this is why this pattern fits so well. It starts out with a two by two rib, but then the ribbing continues on the sides of the sock. So put this on my arm so you can see there's the ribbing continues like half of the stitches split and you do like a quarter of the stitches are rib and then a quarter of the stitches are stockinette and then on the other side they're ribbed again. So the front, so I'll show you this way, the, the front panel all the way on the top is stockinette and the back panel is stockinette and then the sides the ribbing continues down the sides of the sock so it's like it has just enough ribbing that it it fits my feet and my leg really really well it is interesting to knit because it has a little bit of ribbing all the time. So it's it's not like, but it's still very mindless. I just love the way that they fit. I think that out of all the patterns that I've knit, this is the most consistent for me. If I knit this pattern, I know that the sock is gonna fit really, really well. So I'll just share the yarns that I used now. So this one was the Quarry Fibers in Peacock. Um, this next one, these are actually a little bit looser. I think it's because I used a different needle size. This I knit like ages ago, like 2012 probably, 2014, something like that. Um, I don't remember the brand of yarn, but the name of it, the colorway was called The Magic Flute. Um, which is an opera by Mozart and I play the flute. So when I saw that there was a colorway called the Magic Flute and it had a lot of purple in it, which is my favorite color, I had to get it. So um, 
Yeah, so I really like this colorway. I have no idea what brand it was. No idea. But it was it was the name of the colorway that I was like, yep, that one's coming home with me. Um, so, oh, and then this one, like it's it's really cool. It's like it's like kind of a tweed. I don't know if you guys can see all like the tweedy the tweedy speckles in there. But ah, uh, I just really like this one. It's just a very very interesting yarn. Um, and then probably the next pair that I knit, I want to say that maybe this colorway was called Unicorn Barf. <laughs> it might have been. It's three Irish girls. Yeah, I don't remember the name of the colorway. I just, I want to say it was Unicorn Barf, but you know, pink and purple, bright neon -y speckles. I love these socks. So I wear these all the time, all the time. And then three more. And these are all knitterly things. And you might have seen all of these on the podcast. Maybe not this first pair. I don't remember the colorway of this one. But you can even see, like I must have used, I must have used a different needle size. I mean, they're different yarn companies too, but I think I might have knit these again, like on a size two, because these do fit a little bit looser. And then, but you can see like, that the way that that ribbing cinches in the sock it's like it's really narrow and then it just just the way that it stretches they just fit me really well um this was knitterly things and it was one of um i want to say maybe around june a few years ago it was one of her club colorways and actually looking at this one i must have done a short row heel on it so um i think i knit i don't think yeah it the actual pattern is a standard like slip stitch heel and gusset Get out. Ugh, always sits right behind my head and then i have a tail sticking out of my head um yeah so i must have just decided to do a different heel for this one but the short the short row heel is not part of this pattern so I just, I subbed it out for that. And then, okay, hi. You, oh, scoot. <sighs> Two more, and then we have gone through all my socks. <laughs> all right, so this one, I know you guys have seen on the podcast. These are my Easter socks from last year. Um, the colorway is called Jelly Beans, and it's such an interesting color. Um, I didn't think I was going to really like it as I was knitting it up because it was so bizarre, but I took out like jelly beans cause I, I knit these at Easter time and I swear that the color of the jelly beans that I had were all of these exact colors in the socks. So Julia hit it like the nail on the head for this one. Um, and then it came with a plum coordinating mini. So um, again, like it's the slip stitch heel. That's the kind of heel that comes in the pattern and I just swapped out the mini for that. So surprisingly, because I have a lot of this color in my wardrobe, these socks actually match and I actually wear them quite a bit. And then my last, last, last pair of socks. I knit these really recently. I don't, yes, wait, this was just this past November, December, November, December, um, this past autumn for sure is this pair of socks, also knitterly things. This was called Burning Leaves. And I think that this came in Julia's October, October Club. I love these colors so much. I thought that it was really, really fun, neutral, autumnal colors. I used these and I knit Owen some socks too. So, and it came with um, a coordinating mini in the browns and the grays. So I just swapped out the mini for the heels and the toes. And that is it. That is all of my hand knit socks. I thought it was more. I have 29 pairs of socks. Um, I need to knit more. Clearly, I don't have enough socks. 29. That's not even quite enough for one a month, except for the month of February. So I could go 
through the entire month of February, even on a leap year, and wear a different pair of socks every day. So clearly I need at least two more pairs of socks. So I've got the ones that I'm working on now, so that'll give me 30. But yeah, that means if I can get to 31, I would only have to wash my socks once a month. But I, I usually, I like to coordinate my socks to my outfits. So inevitably if my socks are dirty they're the ones that i want to wear so i just i need to knit more i clearly don't have enough um okay so at the start of the podcast i mentioned that i wanted to do a giveaway so i mentioned to you that i have like four years worth of stash from knitterly things i love her yarn julia's yarn always is really fun colors i have so much so much that i have been hoarding that I think I can part with a skein of my Knitterly Things yarn. So if you guys are interested in entering a giveaway, leave a comment below. I would like to know something about socks, favorite sock pattern, favorite heel pattern. I've asked you guys this before, long time ago, but tell me again, tell me what you like. Do you knit socks? Do you hate knitting socks? something about knitting socks and if you just leave me a comment and a like on this video and are subscribed you have to be subscribed then you can be um, eligible to be entered in my giveaway so I all of my yarn is at the apartment so I don't know which pair of socks it will be maybe if you're the winner you can let me know what colors you like and I will try to find something that is suitable towards your tastes I have so much to choose from. So anyway, I thank you guys for joining me today. I'm glad I got to record a different type of a segment for you guys today. I hope it was interesting. Um, I know that I enjoy looking through people's socks. I don't know if that's weird, but I think it's really fun to just see everybody's hand knit socks. And yeah, so anyway, I hope that if, that you guys have like been now exposed to maybe some patterns that you didn't know about before and are inspired to maybe knit one of them. So thank you guys so much for watching. I don't know when I'm gonna podcast from the new place. I keep telling you it's gonna be the last one from here, but then I just, we haven't fully gotten settled over there yet. Not even close, so who knows? Eventually I will be podcasting from the new place. But in the meantime, I'm gonna try to find some opportunities to keep entertaining you all with knitting videos. So yeah, thanks for joining me and I will catch up with you guys again soon. Bye. mouth with its leg. Please don't go to my coffee. Sorry, distracted. I don't like wasps. Panicking. It's actually, I'm like fascinated just watching it here. Just please don't go to my coffee. That's for me, not for you. Hi, please don't come over here either. You're going closer to my coffee. Oh boy, hi. Can I get my coffee without you getting mad at me? Feel like I maybe should rescue it? I'm a little bit nervous. This could turn into a disaster, you guys. Okay, I've got my coffee. The wasp is over there going to leave it alone because I hear that if you leave them alone, they leave you alone. So that's what we're going to do.